the process of building skills and scale is the most important one. The question a few years back was, who's manufacturing in India? Now the question is on the flip side, the question is who is not manufacturing the in India? The one most important factor is that uh, presently the technology is changing so fast that nobody is able to really catch up. So, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Pankaj Doval and I'm a national at the, the, at the Times of India. And uh, at the outset, it is really a pleasure to see and meet people in the physical form. I think we are all tired of the screens uh, and it's time to move beyond those screens. And as Pankaj would say, it's better to manufacture the screens than look at the screens all the time. So, uh, back to the physical world and it feels very good. Uh, coming to the topic at hand today, you know, this is, uh, we'll be talking about the next phase of industrialization in India. Uh, as you know that the Make in India program was one of the key programs uh, of the Modi government when it came into power in 2014. And this program actually got a big fillip through the Atma Nirbhar Bharat program, which came in during the pandemic period. The idea of the government is to ensure that the, uh, that the manufacturing ecosystem in the country gets deeper and deeper we have uh, a very deep-rooted manufacturing ecosystem with component suppliers and it moves beyond the mere assembly kind of work that was being done. Uh, the government wants India to be another factory of the world just like a China or a Vietnam and uh, perhaps there's no better time uh, than this period to actually go about this job. Uh, I have a very, very distinguished panel with me, uh, very experienced and some of them are very good friends as well. Uh, to my left, uh, I have Mr. Pankaj Mahindru. Uh, he is the man who's been the most persistent when it comes to raising issues for the industry, when it comes to talking about uh, how the IT industry, telecom industry needs to go forward and needs to have a very, very robust manufacturing ecosystem. He's the chairman of Indian Cellular and Electronics Association. So welcome, Pankaj. I also have uh, with me uh, Mr. Haryom Rai on my right. Uh, uh, just a few minutes back, he said that he's the fidine of this industry in the sense, in the, in the positive sense that uh, Mr. Rai has taken on the challenge of uh, launching a fresh new smartphone brand in this market where everybody is facing a very, very stiff competition from the Chinese makers, from Samsung, from Apple. And he represents the spirit of the Indian entrepreneurship because he's launching a new brand at this period itself. He's the chairman of Lava International. I have uh, Dr. Rajkumar Upadhyay. Uh, he's the director and chairman of the Center for Development of Telematics or CDOT. And uh, they are not only working on indigenization of the core telecom technologies, but also a lot in the area of cyber security, as he was telling us. So, uh, welcome, sir. Uh, and I also have uh, the very experienced Mr. Arvind Bali. He used to be at Videocon when I used to meet him, Videocon Telecom. And, <clears throat> and today he is handling a very, very critical job. He's the CEO of the Telecom Sector Skill Council. Uh, you know the industry is evolving and, you know, uh, upgradation is required, uh, skill upgradation. And so uh, this body takes care of upgradation of the skills. And last but not the least, we've got the knowledge partner, Mr. Alek Tiwari. He's a partner at KPMG who also focuses a lot on the telecom and IT issues of the industry. So welcome everybody. So uh, let's take initial thoughts from uh, the panelists and let's open the floor. You know, I just wanted to understand that we all love to say that <clears throat> India will become the next Vietnam and India will become the next China. But uh, is this more of a pipe dream like, you know, a decade back we used to say that the Indian auto industry will be like the Chinese auto industry, but we are nowhere close to it now when we look at it. So similarly, are we, you know, kind of daydreaming or is there some sense in that, that, you know, we can also achieve the scale, we can also have a very deep rooted manufacturing ecosystem with a lot of suppliers over here. Uh, I'll start with uh, Mr. Pankaj Mahindru, uh, please. Yes, it is a dream, but it's not a pipe dream. There is no pipe in it. The only pipe is which leads to the numbers we are talking about. We are, we have the tailwinds of uh, what has been achieved in the last uh, five, six years. Uh, mobile phone manufacturing, which was about 19,000 crores in 2015, is today 2,75,000 crores. So it's a growth of 1,500%. And, uh, you know, there is uh, exports are this year will touch 45,000 crores. So it's not that we are dreaming that this is happening, it's happening on the ground. 
uh, very uh, the question a few years back was who's manufacturing in india now the question is on the flip side the question is who is not manufacturing in india every brand on the world is manufacturing in india but the progress is limited to mobile phones unfortunately and the other sectors which is it hardware consumer electronics there has been some development but not much consumer electronics uh, auto electronics medical electronics uh, air conditioning and appliances and hairable and wearable these sectors have not kicked in yet and now there is a plan for a secular growth which is to sustain and grow the mobile phone uh, further uh, to 120 billion dollars and the overall pie to 300 billion dollars so it's yes it is a dream but it's a visionary dream and i think it can happen i think the people on this dais are the ones who are going to do that but uh, mr rai coming to you since you are the guys who are doing what the government wants you know in, ter in terms of investments in terms of you know employing people while there is a growth in smartphones we've also seen that this growth uh, most of this growth is captured by the chinese companies uh, vivo and oppo and xiaomi and the indian brands which used to be like which used to have a big share of this market are nowhere to be seen at least till now even though the government is now trying to encourage the brands by giving those champion pli schemes to the domestic manufacturers you are one of them do you think that uh, uh, you know in the given circumstances where they still have a big share of the market and are very aggressive it is easier for our brands to also come up or is it will it be more of a mnc led market in india thank you pankaj ji for hello am i audible yeah thank you pankaj ji for this uh, beautiful question so before i sort of share as to what is going to happen to the indian brands it is very important for me to set the context as to why indian brands and to let you know why indian brands let me take you to 2007 of china all the brands today you know with huawei the bbk group companies and as well as shami they were 3% of the market in china in 2007 they were about 12% of market in china in 2012 and 2019 the chinese brands were ahead of 90% of the chinese market and by today they are now 60% of the global market why has that happened that's the most important question and how can it be replicated in india and whether india can do without it this is very pertinent question for us to sort of understand why that has happened it is very simple and before i tell you this simple thing i really love the quote of uh, mr jobs steve jobs he always said that simple is harder than complex but you need to work hard to keep your thinking clean to make it simple but once you reach there you can really move mountains so what is the simple thing in this entire complexity of the chinese brands or the indian brands or the multinational brands you know the countries who acquire skills in the beginning let's say europe has acquired skills and because they acquired skills today generally the per capita in europe is about 60 to 63000 dollars per capita and because you have acquired skills and unless you innovate you cannot keep the brands with you so for example you know something which is the tech in the technology if, if it is tapered if you are at 62000 dollar per capita income unless you innovate like let's say apple all the european brands are over even japanese brands are over at 35000 36000 per capita despite having a solid supply chain korean brands are also struggling because they are all making android but why chinese companies could create such a large uh, today value in the world and they are consistently going to create much larger value going forward is because 
how the government has allowed the ecosystem to get built and when the ecosystem got built because their per capita was one third to that of uh, you know korea or is today one third at that time it was one fifth to that of korea or, or you know um, maybe one tenth to that of uh, us and europe because of that the moment they acquired skills and scale they become most comp they became most competitive in the world so the process of building skills and scale is the most important one and how can you build skills at the competitive scale this is the most important question when i'm talking about competitive competitive scale means globally competitive scale so the only way to build globally competitive scale is by building your own large companies who can go and take the fair share for the indian citizens out of the out of the global gdp for example we are 18% people surviving on a mere 3.14% of the global gdp the only way for us to grow so we are you know and another context i will give you you will understand when the britishers went from india we were 3.9% of the global gdp in the last 75 year we have actually progressed backward slowly that's what we have done from 3.9 we have brought it to 3.1% and while our population was at that time 14% of the global population our population has grown to now 18% which means whatever we have done is not well and the only and the most important thing actually this country has everything in terms of people in terms of our per capita is the lowest what we need to have is skills and skills means globally competitive skills for that economies of scale and that is the most important thing and it can only be done once we are able to build our own companies once we are able to do that i think no one we are 17% of the chinese per capita no one can compete with us for to do that one of the methodology is the fiscal methodology which the government is using which is the pli the second methodology which the world has used which we are not using as a country is the monetary system which is the development banks we are not using at all the third methodology which the world has used to build its own companies is uh you know the market because you have your own market how can you utilize your market to build your own companies because unless you build your own large companies you can't build the country in 1996 china had only one fortune 500 companies today china has 135 fortune 500 companies and these fortune 500 companies create 56% of gdp of china because you have large companies you have semi large companies and you have small companies because of that so it is top down and i think this is the time for us right. i would lastly say just last two line after yeah. that i would not even speak if you want because i have spoken okay, taken too much of time but the most important thing for us you know i was just sharing with pankaj ji when he said yaar aap akele khade hue hain to maine kaha saab ki ye critical hai is country ke liye agar hum apni companies build nahi karenge तो ये कंट्री कभी भी आगे नहीं बढ़ पाएगा फाइनेंशियली और टेक्नोलॉजिकली और इस कंट्री को जो स्किल्स एक्वायर कर रहे हैं वो कंपनीज के थ्रू एक्वायर करने हैं पहले मिलिट्री जाती थी वो जाके कॉलोनी बना लेती थी अभी मिलिट्री नहीं है अभी कंपनीज हैं अगर हमें अपना शेयर चाहिए अपने सिटीजन के लिए हमें अपनी कंपनीज बिल्ड करनी है और ये क्रिटिकल है आजादी की लड़ाई में साहब को बोल रहा था कि उन्नीस से पहले नहीं हुई आज भी आजादी की लड़ाई लड़नी है ये जो गरीबी से और भुखमरी से आजादी की लड़ाई लड़नी है हमें लास्ट एक मैंने बात लिखी थी कि हमें खुद खड़ा होना पड़ेगा इसमें मैंने लिखा था कि चल अंधेरे की चादर हटा रोशनी कर के खुद को जला दर्द का दर्द जब लोग परेशान हैं तबाह हैं दर्द का दर्द गर तुझ में है कुछ जरा सा तो मरहम लगा मुर्दा घर में तो सब सोए हैं मुर्दा घर में तो सब सोए हैं जिंदा है तो कुछ हरकत तो ला और बात करने में क्या बात है उठ जमाना बदल के दिखा थैंक यू दैट्स रियली स्पोकन फ्रॉम द हार्ट एंड वी वुड लाइक टू सर्टेनली हेयर मोर फ्रॉम यू एंड द फैक्ट इज बिल्ड योर ओन ओन लार्ज कंपनीज व्हिच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट वी आल्सो नीड टू हैव आवर ओन कंपनीज दैट आर नेक्स्ट एप्पल और सैमसंग यू नो एंड सो आई होप एंड वी आर कॉन्फिडेंट एंड लावा ऑल्सो ग्रोज लाइक दैट 
uh, you also spoke about the you know importance of skilling and mr bali you've got the very important task of you know now looking after the skilling of the industry you were telling me that roughly 1.25 lakh students uh, or you know people in the job is what you've skilled how do you see the scenario right now in terms of are we prepared with that skilled manpower or do you think that you know uh, we are moving to a sensor led age right now you know in telecom or in mobile phones and things like that and also we need a large man uh, manpower which is creating all those mobile phones are we skilled enough or are we long distance away from that yeah as well as far as skill requirements are concerned i think, I think you need to move closer to the mic or push, push the mic to, uh, towards your mouth towards your face is taraf ko karke bol little closer yeah. so as far as uh, scaling is concerned i think scaling requirements are driven from three four major factors i think the one most important factor is that uh, presently the technology is changing so fast that nobody is able to really catch up there was a time when you know something new used to come and there was time 8 to 10 years to monetize it the next technology will come but now you know like we are at 4g 5g work is going on and we are already working on 6g and there was a time when we were very happy when mbps speed came and then we were talking about giga speeds and now you know we are a tera speeds we are talking about and ultimately you know why this especially in telecom you know why so much work is happening or so much requirement is happening the main reason for that is that uh, we have what 7.8 billion uh, population of the world and there are estimates that in 2030 we'll be needing at least 50 billion sim or connected devices now for that you know you need networks and speeds and latencies all those issues plus you know the way world is changing on internet shopping everything so it is changing very fast whereas academia is not really able to catch up because they have to follow a structure and new slavers which comes so one piece of skilling what is required is that college pass outs who are whom we have to make employable that means we have to give them those small modules and they learn those modules and they straight away becomes employable then the second kind of skills that are required is uh, people you know who are working purely like a uh, manual workers but you know like if they continue to do the kind of work they are doing they will they, they will not produce quality so if we skill them they do better quality like so much of fiber work is happening same way is the case with the factories you know like we see factories in china taiwan japan korea versus our factories so the moment you know the company invest into skilling of the workers i think productivity level goes up quality levels goes up and overall things become better so i think one is for new technology other is for better productivity we need probably all the time scaling uh, requirement and the third and the most important part is that the new technology is coming nobody knows about that you know like all youth everybody has to be trained on that they have to be skilled reskilled upskilled so all that work has to happen in a very very structured man- manner so your question uh, pankaj that uh, are, are, are as a country you know we are equipped to uh, train people for all this pli schemes and all the schemes which are coming so i tell you that in last 7 years a lot of work has happened in skilling space skill india mission under uh, prime minister's vision i think lot of work has happened telecom sector itself has got more than 1000 training centers we have already established uh, 15 center of excellence so all that is available only thing is you know like uh, there is still i'll say a big gap between um, uh, manpower you know they don't know how to get the jobs and companies they don't know how to source the right manpower so we are actually working on those filling those gaps and ultimately the last leg what we have added in telecom sector skill council is yeah we are actually talking to the companies and asking them that you tell us your requirement either we'll do partly classroom training and rest on the job training or take them on naps and multiple schemes and ultimately give the benefits but how much of percentage of the people the students or the people who are working in the companies right now are prepared to handle the kind of you know technologies the the speed at which the technology is changing 5g 6g you know uh, does it require a massive skilling uh, or you know yeah so one piece is there are already um, millions of people who are already working i think estimate is around 4.5 million are already working in telecom sector yeah so companies are all good companies well established companies so they upskill their employees so that work continues to happen 
the other piece says the people who are passing out the people who are passing out they are also becoming very smart especially with online learning they know that where is their skill gap we also teach them we also guide them and they bridge that skill gap and ultimately you know they get employed yeah. the last piece is as far as the workers are concerned i think that was the biggest challenge now their government has come out with a beautiful schemes like naps is a scheme where 15% of your employees you can keep under as apprentice there is no minimum wage requirement there is no pf or esi requirement mm. and even the age could be as young as 16 school college pass out you can employ okay. so plus you know the latest scheme what is coming in nep 20 uh, education policy government is saying that you need, need not even go to the school or college you work in the factories will give you grades and as per the grades after 10 years 5 years you will start getting degrees by just working in the factories so these are big changes right. that company coming in the sector i think more of industry based learning yeah. uh, coming to uh, dr upadhyay uh, we are talking about the manufacturing but what about the core work which needs to be done sorry my mic so uh, for the core work what kind of work are we doing at c dot how prepared are we on in the core area uh before i talk about c dot uh, because uh, two things i would like to say that why is that atmanirbhar bharat or make in india has become so important today there are two reasons mike has to be close yeah hello yeah yeah so before i say that what we are doing in c dot because that is also driven by the government policy i would like to say that why is that atmanirbhar bharat or make in india has become important now there are two reasons reason one economic because today if you look at the uh, demand for the electronics is around 80 billion which is going to be around 300 billion by the time 2025 and most of it is met by the import in the electronics segment alone uh, which includes telecom there is a trade deficit of 50 billion dollar exports are not growing the way it need to be gr- growing except for some uh, good news from the mobile manufacturing sector so what does it mean that if i can bring down this trade deficit do manufacturing in india lot of jobs will be created economic multiplier effects will happen so economical this is one reason the one of the most another important reason is there which is being talked about today also in russia ukraine war it is security your networks are totally ip if i get a control of your network i can bring down your telecom network within no time and once telecom network is down all your critical infrastructure will be down and nothing will work so security is another reason and you must have been reading various governments are doing various things to to see that the the networks which are deployed in the country are secure so the best best way of securing network is make indigenous so that is why c dot is doing now looking at the government what government is doing uh, because if you look at the manufacturing today 50% of the manufacturing happens in china but there are companies like qualcom intel broadcom they are not manufacturing but the lot of value ch- value addition goes to them so we so we need to do in both the sectors in manufacturing as well as ip and design so what government has done for the manufacturing part government came with the pli scheme pli scheme that said that if you manufacture in india and set a target and make an investment of around 3345 crore over uh, next 5 years i'll give you an incentive of 12195 crore that is the government scheme what it will do it will start manufacturing in india will offset the disability cost will create 40000 employment will lead to 1.82 lakh crore of production extra so this is one part from the manufacturing side now without design also you can't do design is very important today all the chipsets all the socs are imported and is not easy actually it's not easy but somewhere we have to start government has come up with another scheme dli design land incentive and semiconductor policy where government said i will give you 76000 crore to set up this related to semiconductor uh, uh, fabs any design related to that because otherwise who will make investment so government as far the government is concerned government has done this 
another scheme i just very small scheme because startup you know unicorns are getting created day in day out in india because of the very small support from the government the department of telecom has a scheme called dcis where they set the you know they help the startups to come up so government is already looking on the entire value chain now coming back to cdot cdot uh, uh, we have been given the we have were given the task last year uh, somewhere in 2020 that you have to produce 4g 5g 6g for the country come what may that was the uh, mandate given to us and i am happy to report that soon you will hear a good news in the uh, 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 in the media that we are going to complete this job and soon this network will be deployed in bsl network it will not be 4g alone 5g nsa will be deployed by independence day 2022 this year in bsl network so 4g 5g we are doing secondly to promote uh, the industry what we are doing in cdot whatever technologies we have developed be it wi-fi be it router be it switches 1m2m iot hundreds of technologies are there but the approach earlier had been keep these technologies here and find the partners and not allow the source code to go now we have taken a decision we will give everything to the industry including source code so that they can customize you know if i give source code to 10 guys 10 companies will work on it and 10 kind of uh, variants will come out in the market so government is doing definitely a good job and because without the government support we can't do right. i can assure uh, this that 4g and 5g will be from india in our indian network very very soon as regards 6g government has already put a task force which is working very uh, uh, vigorously and it has partners not only from government because government has realized that alone we can't do so we have the, our task forces from industry, from academics, from practitioners, from policy makers to do right. the policy for 6G. So that's what we are doing. Right, yeah, right, right. And before I go to Alec, I just wanted to come back to Pankaj once again because this is the core that we are talking about, the core of the network and the core of technology. Uh, Pankaj, do you think that while these are very encouraging words, but we've been very late in doing this, we should have been doing this earlier, the Nokia and the Siemens and, you know, Ericsson, everybody now has captured this market. What uh, do you <coughs> Before I answer that, I just want to little bit contradict Mr. Opadhyay. The 50 billion import, actually our target is to increase it 300% more. We want the import of India to go up to 150, 200 billion dollars. Because let me ask the audience a question. What is the import of electronics in China? Can you tell me what is the import of electronics in China? Not the export of electronics. Anybody? The import of electronics in China is $500 billion. Right? So the idea is not to compress the import. You know, that will be Koem and Mendak Wali strategy. The idea is to have a global supply chain and to export more than $200 billion. So you import $150, $200 billion, you export $250 billion. Utilize your skill, lower labor cost, and export more. So that change of mindset is really important. No, I don't think this is... You know, I was very surprised nobody clapped when Mr. Opadhyay said that we'll have domestic 4G and 5G. I, I think, have we become so skeptical that, uh, you know, we it, it was great news, but nobody clapped. I think we should clap. No, absolutely. I think, Mr. Opadhyay, you'll have to, once you deploy it, once it works, only then people will take it seriously. I yes. think, uh, because I think government announcements are met with a lot of skepticism. No, no, hopefully, you know, CDOT from BSNL also moves out, uh, out to some private operators as well, you know, if the technology is competitive enough. I would just like to respond yeah. to Pankaj and you, sir. I never said that we have to cut down import. Import is a necessary part because once you import from the best sources, you will be efficient. What I said that we need to reduce our trade deficit. If the trade deficit, is, for example, in mobile, in 2017, we were exporting 0.2 billion dollar. Today, we are exporting 1.7 billion dollar. In 2017, our import was 3.5 billion dollar. Today, our import is only 0.5 billion dollar for the. So, if you if you are exports uh, deficit 
reduces by some way means that you are exporting more and importing less, definitely it is going to create lot many jobs. Second, whether the news of, is correct or not, you will hear it very soon in the media. There is no doubt, absolutely no doubt, country will get its own 4G, its own 5G. There is absolutely no doubt. Now, we should applaud that, for sure. Coming, coming to uh, Kalek, you are the knowledge guy, huh? So, do tell me that, you know, when we talk about scale, how far are we from countries that we are trying to compete with, with the Vietnam, with the China? Like, for example, I understand that while Samsung does a business of roughly $12 billion in India through sales and all, the production of Samsung in Vietnam is roughly $55, $60 billion, $60 billion or so. And with all the things that they're trying to do in India, the total sales is around $12 billion. So this is the scale that we're talking about. The manufacturing would be even less, you know. Uh, so uh, when I spoke about the pipe dream, I didn't mean to like put him down. But you know, uh, if, we, if you look at the scale, it's a, it's a large distance that we need to cover. Can you give us some idea about where we are right now? How challenging is it? And can it be achieved? Like we are all very enthusiastic and Pankaj wants us to applaud. But like, is it 10 years away? Is it 8 years away? Is it 5 years away? When we can also talk about the sim of similar kind of scales. Yeah. So, definitely from a scale perspective, Mike it is... Uh, the mic let's closer, please. Yeah. yeah. So, from a scale perspective, uh, where we are, uh, with respect to the examples of China that we take, it's, uh, it's multiples of, uh, you know, not even 1x, 2x, 3x, but maybe multiples x uh, difference. But the way I would look at it is a little differently. See, every uh, country has, has, has developed their capabilities uh, for driving the GDP growth, right? Maybe 10 years back, it was China uh, driving it on the back of manufacturing. And of course, manufacturing is important because it has the highest multiplier impact in the economy. Right? There are certain areas where we can uh, leapfrog those things which we have left behind, there's no point catching up, right? We are far behind playing the catch-up game of scale on old manufacturing. But where can we leapfrog? We talked about 4G, right? Now with 5G, the technology itself is moving to uh, virtualized RAN, right? Virtualized radio access network, which means traditionally the entire radio access network which used to have those BTS and E node B and then networking equipments deployed uh, physical deployments, nowadays they are all moving to a software defined network, which means there is a lot of focus on uh, the software that goes into the network and the chipsets and semiconductors can be the same. You can control the routing logic, switching logic from a central location. Now that is something which needs more focus on software side development and not only the core hardware manufacturing, which needs semiconductors and fabs, right? Now that could be one sweet spot. So manufacturing, when we talk, look at scale, it, we need to look at which are those newer areas yeah. right, where we can get scale while we can continue to play uh, the catch-up game on semiconductors and some of those because they are important to drive. Yeah. Uh, you know, they need much more scale, even the minimum economic scale required to set up a plant uh, has its own uh, you know, uh, uh, challenges. The second part of scale and uh, is, is the digital digital scale, right? Uh, we talk of one METI plan, the, the uh, report that METI published, uh, which was also one of the themes today, uh, one trillion uh, digital, one trillion dollar digital economy. Yeah. The themes that the entire one trillion dollar digital is, vision is based on is actually more services uh, digital oriented, not so much necessarily manufacturing oriented. There are nine themes. Okay, the themes are uh, doubling the income of farmers. Themes are uh, e-agriculture, e-healthcare, uh, making uh, sustainable energy for each and every household, which will go to solar uh, yeah. and those things. Uh, uh, telemedicine or e-medicine, uh, digital banking. Now, a lot of these. Uh, ideas which will drive the next trillion dollars, the next trillion dollars, right, is not necessarily going to be driven from traditional manufacturing, but more digital manufacturing. What Facebook does today, right, what Uber and Ola does today, what Zomato is doing in India or, you know, other companies like Paytm and others 
and many are building in india the neo bank concept itself that rbi has come up with that is all digital banking and digital manufacturing yeah so i think that is the other part of scale where great we have a natural sweet spot natural talent the 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 traditional disadvantages which were structural in nature uh, infrastructural in nature you know supply chain disadvantages uh, cost uh, disadvantages and the way china has subsidized the china chinese government the way they have subsidized uh, the clusters whether it is mobile device cluster the toy cluster indian government i think will never be really keen to go it that way right, right. so the important part is what okay. elements of manufacturing which are relevant to pick up and yeah. how do we build the scale on those areas where we which is a sweet spot for the country no i'll 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 get mr arium rai to speak on this but before that let me tell you uh, i recently met uh, nishan batra who heads uh, the r&d for uh, nokia globally and he's also the head of uh, bell labs and he was telling me that the kind of talent that we have and the kind of knowledge based work that we can do original work from india is unparalleled and you know if we focus on those areas then obviously we don't have any catching up to do but uh, th- this is where we can start afresh and maybe take a lead uh, but mr arium rai uh, do you agree with uh, what alek was speaking when we asked about scale or do you think that it's a tall order so so uh, let me try and sort of answer it differently so first of all you know let us understand what is the value of electronics and tech industry in the world the total valuation of electronics and tech industry is about 15.5 trillion dollars which is about 17% of total valuation and if you see the impact of electronics and tech on the gdp is equal to about 16 17 trillion dollars which is about 17 18% of the global gdp so this is one of the most valuable sector and its contribution in the whole gdp is also consistently increasing now with this kind of large numbers the second most important thing what we need to understand is that the principle of winner takes all is valid it is a law nobody can defy this law it's like gravitational law that finally only a few countries are going to supply to the rest that is going to happen no matter what we think so whether from that context if you look at vietnam and look at india vietnam got the advantage of being next to china when chinese per capita has been growing and the guys were looking out of china to manufacture and they were next door to china very near that advantage as well as i always say the most important thing is the leadership because that was the most important of course they had the advantage but look at the fundamentals of india we are equal number of people as compared to china and vietnam is just 10% or less than 9% of who we are right now their gdp per capita has grown like anything because they are so limited people very soon they are going to be completely non competitive india's gdp is going to grow per capita is going to grow very very slowly because we are so many people so if at all once our gdp is going to grow any market which can replace china is going to be india and it cannot be in vietnam and any small market of the world so the most important place which can replace china in manufacturing or which can have the fair share is india and with such a you know 17% per capita i am telling you that this is the most valuable country to manufacture provided we are ready and i am very sure that as industry we have taken the responsibility we are not sitting aside and saying oh government is has to do this and government is not doing this we have taken responsibility that will make the government do the right things and we build the industry here like we have built in mobile mobile is at the core of the entire electronics once we are able to do mobile there is no electronics which we cannot do in india and i'm very sure that we will do 50% of the global electronics by 2032 it'll take time it'll not happen tomorrow morning but that's opportunity we stand and 50% of global electronic manufacture we can do in india and 50% of value addition we can do in india by 2032 33 time frame in such a manner that remaining 50% which is being manufactured in the world 
also cannot be competitive without utilizing the India's, uh, you know, supply chain. So that is what is the dream and that is what I can see a clear possibility. Thank you. You are one confident uh, man, 50% by 2022. Uh, I, I just wanted to yeah. little bit rebut Alek. Yeah. It's, it's not either or. Huh. While I endorse uh, Hariji's view that we should be doing 50% of electronics, but we should be doing 80% of the world chappals, shoes. You see, those disabilities, we can't have a chalta hai attitude about it. The core organic industries which employ millions, we should not let Bangladesh go ahead of us. We sh because India cannot be a sectoral economy that, okay, we are producing, you know, the digital uh, manufacturing, etc. We have to produce everything under the sun. And, you know, look at uh, output, uh, export of 3-4 trillion dollars in the next 10-15 to 15 years. Yeah, but you know, from one side, when we talk about being uh, the factory of the world, uh, there are also critics who say that by giving out these PLI incentives and sweeteners, we are being protectionist. That we are trying to insulate our economy, we are trying to insulate our companies. And once we open up, our companies may not be able to, uh, you know, compete uh, aggressively because these uh, PLI benefits are for a period of four to five years, for example. And the moment we open up, then again we are there in the big bad world, which gets very competitive and then without any support or I, I don't want to use that word crutches of that PLI support, no, no. Uh, we are nowhere uh, in the no, market. You see, the, the PLI is a very well thought out idea. The idea is to have two pillars of growth, which is global value chains and create Indian champions. Yeah. So historically, the first time we recognized in a government of India policy and we put Indian companies on a different platform to make them global leaders in the under $200 mobile phone. This is the mobile phone PLI and mobile phone PLI was the first PLI. You are absolutely right that it is a crutch, but you know, these are infant companies and infant companies don't, yeah, it's a uh, milk bottle actually, it's not a crutch because they are infants, they have not even started walking. So we have to nurture them, we have to support them, we have to build them and at the same time, give competitiveness to the global value chains. But in these four or five years, Pankaj, I totally agree with you that we have to peg away at all the disabilities which are there whether it is higher power cost, higher land cost, etc. Uh, labor is very competitive. We have to skill it and make it the most efficient in the world. So, five years is the inflection point. The PLI is off. You know, we have to. But where did we miss the bus, uh, Hariyomji? Uh, because, you know, while he's saying that we require a bottle of milk right now, but if I remember correctly, uh, all your domestic companies, Intex, Carbon, Lava, you guys were big, Micromax. You know, Micromax used to hit, hit a turnover of 10,000 crores around 2011-12 or I think the, the, those kind of years. What happened that we suddenly lost the plot and we gave so much of space that the Chinese or any outsider, not single out Chinese, could come and establish themselves out here. Is it also our own mistake that we did not fail to capitalize on the kind of uh, groundwork that we had done earlier? No, absolutely. I think I'll answer your question, but let me just... Uh, you know, uh, talk on the point which we were talking about the PLI, etc. You know, I will talk in Hindi for 2 minutes so understand ho. I think, but we may have people from South India, so I, let me speak in English only. That, let's say, in a family, there are four people, okay? And the market cost of the four people, let's say, is 100,000 per person. And because of 100,000 per person, now you're not competitive. Imagine, because your people are sitting idle, at 100,000 salary and the moment you subsidize that by 50,000, you say, okay, 50,000 salary is subsidized. The household starts producing 200,000 because four people can be deployed. And that 200,000 can go and become economic multiplier in the country at least four or five times. And the kind of value which the government is going to get is phenomenal. Actually, this is the process. It is not subsidy, it is the understanding and thought process with which countries have built, especially at the time when you have disabilities. So therefore, this is not, uh, I would say, this is not expenditure. This is an investment. 
and now coming to the second question is that which is going to multiply many times that we were really a 40 50 percent of the, of the value market the indian companies were 40 15 percent of the volume market in 2016 uh, time frame and now we are 9.2 percent of the value market and just two percent of the uh, volume market and just two percent of the value market why we drop so let's understand that we did not drop because we became uncompetitive no chinese companies were earning about five billion dollar each year in china because they did not allow google or any american technology company to come to china and because of that only in the software each company each handset they were making 18 dollars per handset uh, for one year and if the life cycle of the handset is 2.7 years each company each handset they are making 50 dollars so if they are selling about 100 million phones each company they are making 5 billion dollars when they are making 5 billion dollars they have potential to lose money when they came to india pankaji you have done this article they came here and they started losing money like anything despite doing hundred and hundred thousands of turnover most of them were losing five thousand six thousand crore together the mobile market started losing twenty thousand crore the infant and nascent companies which were trying to get built got destroyed and that is lack of knowledge and understanding of the policy makers and also of the companies because we were also not knowledgeable what policy makers can do together as a country we fail to realize the importance of building our own companies and therefore what has happened is where we are now now in the last three years we understand that we have to build champions and as i told you it is a matter of time the moment we'll be able to build skills and scales no one can be more competitive than us than the indian companies and we believe we have done the mathematics that by 2033 if at all we do certain three things right which i cannot share right now because it's a very different forum our indian companies can make 500 million phones by 2033 of 112 billion dollars that's the possibility yeah Pankaj, that's a big number can i uh, respond on pli to Dr. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, i would like to clarify uh, pli is not a subsidy scheme it's not a subsidy scheme it's a scheme which you give incentive on sales the first requirement is you need to make an investment as i true, said true, true. The investment is to be made 3,345 crore by uh, currently 31 companies has been given PLI. If they reach a sales figure from the base year, then only they get this thing. So how it helps, if you give some kind of incentive because making the manufacturing plants, making assembly lines is not easy. So that it helps them uh, in terms of competing globally. So therefore, I won't say that it is a subsidy. Since it is not a subsidy, so they will survive differently. Yeah. Initial, when I when when somebody buys one auto, and after one auto he puts another auto, another then he goes for car. Is this way? So you are helping the industry. And the second part, the second scheme that government is done, the DLI is also again on the design part. You look at the Qualcomm revenue, yeah, look yeah. at the Intel revenue, look at the Broadcom revenue, look at the Ali's revenue. They are not manufacturing anything. But there's a mind game and most of the IPs are done in Bangalore, Noida, Pune. So why can't we do it? That is how the government has come Companies up with this. Companies also need to make their commitment, show their commitment. But coming to your, uh, to CDOT itself, do you think like when you say that you've come of age and now you're working on 4G and 5G technologies, do you think that going forward, a CDOT can also compete very aggressively with the likes of, as I said, Nokia or Huawei and we can have core technologies being developed out of India which, you know, uh, which is uh, as best as uh, the others are doing. I think again here, I will like to say, if I look at the Huawei's uh, R&D budget, Huawei's R&D budget is around $18 billion per annum, 18 billion. Nokia's, 8 billion. The whole development cost of 4G is just 30 million. 30 million it has been produced. I don't find any problem, any challenge, because the challenge was there was no support. Now there is a political support, there is an executive support. And once India decides we need to do this, what has happened in space? What has happened in nuclear? Government decided we need to get into space. Government decided we get, want to get into nuclear. There was no focus earlier. Now, see, earlier thinking was, and naturally the, the cost efficient. If I get something cheaper in Vietnam or US or Europe, I must import. That was the thing. 
But because of the security reason, this is a parameter important now that we produce ourselves. I don't find any problem. And through this forum, I would like to inform these industry stakeholders that earlier CDOT was a closed organization. Today it is an open organization. Any of our technology, what we have developed, be it router, Wi-Fi, 1M, 2M, 4G, 5G, anything will be available to the industry partners along with the source code. We will fund these startups. We are going to fund a startup this year. We have never been funding. This year, a great funding will be done for startups because we have seen if we work in a collaborative manner, yes. Using talent of our country, I think nothing is impossible. So, 30 million versus 18 billion dollars, but you yeah, are also we, giving results. Our our budget is just 30 million and the Huawei's budget is 18 billion dollars. So, naturally, you know, to compete with Nokia and uh, Huawei will go a long way. But once we put, I am telling you this BSNL POC, what we have done and we yes. are, which we are completing, yeah. will open up the door to the global market. It's not for BSNL alone. It is, see the RAN, what we have done, Tejas has done the RAN. It has passed all the tests, everything A to Z, to the world class RAN parameters. So today, the, uh, it is it will supply to BSNL, tomorrow it will go to Indonesia, Europe, anywhere. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I'm sure, and this consortium is led by TCS, which is itself is a software power. What was preventing us earlier is the hardware. Now today, my 4G core is totally virtualized. It runs on a standard software. A standard PC it can run, it standard server it can run depending upon the call volume. If you want to run up a small network, you can it will work on a PC. If you are, want to run for a carrier grid like BSNL, it will require 30-40 servers. So because of the softwareization, now the companies like TCS has a much bigger role. And I'm sure that is why, because the 5G is complete software. It is working on a core software, a core hardware. So we have great opportunity to leapfrog in 5G and 6G. We were left behind in 2G, 3G, 4G. I'm, I'm very sure this is the time for India. As Prime Minister said, Amrit Kal is definitely because of the softwareization in the uh, uh, in the value chain, like he was referring uh, Mr. Tiwari, the ORAN. India is really working very hard in ORAN, and yeah. soon you would have been re listening to the news from the Reliance, Geo here and there. Our 4G, not one partner, multiple vendors will be available producing 4G uh, radios in the country. Very encouraging words to hear. Mr. Bali, uh, coming back to you, uh, in terms of the manpower, uh, which are the areas where you're focusing the most right now? Uh, so, as <clears throat> one is, you know, like conventional uh, scaling, uh, because maximum manpower demands are in those, like people who are on factories, uh, basically uh, technicians, workers, uh, that is one area. Uh, but then uh, there is a very big shift now on IoT, machine learning. Right. And uh, recently, I think uh, Prime Minister has announced that, you know, that there has to be a very, very big focus on robotic, uh, on, on um, uh, drone technology. So we are actually working uh, on drone technology. We have just um, going to launch a center of excellence in Patna soon, right. where there will be drone technology available, similarly other places. So those are the uh, areas. So basically all these future skills is one area which we are doing for uh, qualified engineers and uh, upscaling purposes and for mass consumption, like for factory usage, uh, we are still training people uh, on SMTs or, um, or on software designs or, or um, basically routine kind of uh, right. jobs. Just uh, we're moving towards the close of the discussion. Uh, just uh, comments from uh, Mr. Hariom Rai uh, Pankaj on one issue about ease of doing business. While obviously uh, a lot of enablers are there in the in the market right now, and the government also seems to be very mindful of the concerns of the industry. But time and again in private conversations, we hear about this uh, problem about, you know, uh, on ease of doing business. Do you think we've sorted that thing out or do you think we still have those irritants where, you know, uh, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, there is something or the other that comes and bothers you and takes you away from your core work to managing the government affairs and moving out of your managing your, you know, uh, uh, manufacturing or other areas. You know, this guy, I'm very scared of this guy, Prasoon. <laughs> he got me into a lot of trouble. <laughs> this question was asked to me and uh, and I just said that, you know, in some parameters, India can compete with the worst in the world. 
right? And uh, he projected it in a different manner. So I hope Pankaj, you won't do that. No, I think there has been uh, there has been a lot of change. There has been a lot of change. Has it uh, completely transformed? No. Uh, we would be like a middle nation at the moment in terms of uh, clarity, in terms of ease of doing business. So there is a lot more to do. The mindset of the revenue authorities continues to be very shrill and uh, uh, you know uh, very unfriendly at times. So that is something which if India has to be a great nation, there has to be a trust and a deep patriotism and not, uh, you know, jingoistic patriotism, you know. Uh, that is required in each and every person that uh, I have to build the nation, I have to sacrifice for the nation. Uh, you know, it's not the buying the farmhouse and the, you know, two million dollar worth of diamonds for my wife. That is not my objective. My objective is to build the nation because if, when everybody works like that, you know, it will become much uh, bigger. But the chill factor of ease of doing business or the lack of ease of doing business is a, is a very terrible thing. You cannot define it because when something is chilled, it doesn't move. So we should not, uh, you know, get smug about it. <coughs> there is a lot of work to be done. What is Pankaj, your I think uh, 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 on the yeah. same point, but I see that uh, one area, you know, like last 40 years I've been in the business or industry, last five years, the kind of focus work which is happening, especially on education and scaling, that is totally unmatched. Correct. Government, central government, all the ministries are working on that. And that is going to bring a lot of results. And I'm not talking only about telecom sector. I yeah. think all 39 sectors, the way government is covering, and the kind of focus they're bringing. So there's a big change in the last five, correct, seven years. Correct, correct. Right. Mr. Arium Rai, what is your view? Because you're on the no, ground. I, I think, uh, you know, it's uh, all is the question of vision as to how do you visualize it, right? Michelangelo said that the greatest danger to most of us is not that we aim too high and fell short, but that we aim too low and achieved it. Actually, that's the most important one. This is a standpoint. So when we look at the standpoint, we look, you know, what is that we are importing and how can we ensure that we don't import and sup uh, supply domestically? I think we have to eye for exports to the world and in the bargain, we'll supply locally. Similarly, ease of doing business is just a necessary condition. If in 2022 we are talking about ease of doing business, I think definitely there is something wrong with us and had something not wrong with us, we would not have been 18% people, would not have been surviving on a mere 3.1% GDP. So this is true that even today, ease of doing business we are talking about and I think we have to go far beyond that and the way to do, way to go far beyond that is first the mindset change and the mindset change means what? You know, we as government, we have to recognize and realize that every single government is the largest company of the nation, the biggest company of the nation. And every single business is like a branch manager of the government because government cannot earn money. No way. The only way government can earn money is by making the businesses earn money and right. making the citizen employees in the, in the businesses. And therefore, it is the necessary condition. I'm only saying, let's eye for much larger, this thing, much larger vision. Let's go past, you know, ease of doing business. Let's say, how can we take, you know, our companies to global scale and how can we build something so large and phenomenal for India that we are at least a 16, 17 trillion dollar economy in time to come. I think that's very candid and uh, thank you all for a very candid discussion. Uh, there are constraints of time, so we'll have to stop it out here. But uh, Broadly, as I see, uh, there's a lot of optimism, there's a lot of positive aggression. Uh, but yes, the government is also a stakeholder and the government has to realize that the growth of the industry is also the growth of the nation. And so we're all partners in this. Uh, thank you very much all uh, for this wonderful discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Before we close this session, I would request our Mr. Dhruv Behel from Exhibitions India Group. He's the director in EIG. 
to give our mementos to our moderator, Mr. Pankaj Dovil, who is national editor, The Times of India. Mr. Dovil. A round of applause, please. I'm sure you can clap harder. Mr. Hari Om Hari, Chairman, Lava International. Mr. Pankaj Mahendru, Chairman, India Cellular and Electronics Association. Mr. Rajkumar Upadhyay, EDN Chairman, C Dot. Mr. Arvind Bali, CEO, Telecom Sector Skill Council. And Mr. Alek Tiwari, partner, KPMG.